Today let's take up calls in areas. Uh, first of all, let's try to understand what is calls in areas. Whenever a shareholder does not pay or defaults in the payment of allotment or call money, right? It's called calls in areas. The amount of money that is not paid, right? The amount of money that is not paid is calls in areas, right? So now, if you want to open a calls in areas account, let's see how we have to do it. There are actually two ways of doing it. One is without opening the calls in areas account which we have been doing till now and one is by opening the calls in areas account. So let's look at the method of opening the calls in areas accounts account right. Now what will be the journal entries for this let's look at that. Now first of all whenever a shareholder doesn't pay the call money on his shares right the entry will be calls in areas account debit to let's say he hasn't paid the share second and final call right so it will be like this. Right, so this is being non receipt of second and final call money right now, supposing the final call was due on the first day of April and it was not paid by some 200 shareholders or something like that. Now after two months they pay that amount. So whenever the amount is received we write bank account debit to calls in areas account. This is for receipt of calls in areas at a later date right now when there is a calls in areas account the shareholders who have not paid the amount are also supposed to pay interest on that money now it depends whether the company is taking interest from them or not suppose the company has a provision of taking interest from those who have not paid their calls in time right okay so now in that case we'll have to pay uh, the shareholders have to pay the interest interest on calls in areas so whatever is the amount that is due they will be paying interest on that The first entry for this will be sundry members account debit to interest on calls in areas. This is when the interest becomes due, right? And when the interest is actually received, we write bank account debit to sundry members account. This is on receipt of the interest money from the shareholders, right? Finally, this interest on calls in areas 
is transferred to the profit and loss account. So now you will write interest on calls in arrears account debit to profit and loss account. So these are the journal entries that you will be making for calls in arrears. Let's look at this once again. The first one, when the money is not received, we write calls in arrears account debit to share. Now here I have assumed that the money has not been paid on the share second and final call. If supposing the money had not been paid on the first call, then we will write calls in arrears account debit to share first call account like this. So for each and every call, wherever the shareholders had defaulted, you can you have to put a calls in arrears account, right? Supposing there are 200 shareholders who defaulted on the first call and 100 shareholders who defaulted on the second call. So you will have both the entries. For the 200 shareholders, you will write calls in arrears account debit to share first call account. For the 100 shareholders, it will be calls in arrears to share second and final call. And when they pay the money, it will be bank account debit to calls in arrears account, right? Interest on calls in arrears. So the first entry is when the interest becomes due and the second entry is on the receipt of the interest. Then finally, this is being the interest on calls in arrears transferred to statement of profit and loss, right? Now let's take up a small question on this calls in arrears. Narmada Limited issued fifty thousand shares of rupees ten each payable rupees two on application. Rupees 3 on allotment and rupees uh, 3 on the first call and rupees 2 on the second and final call. All money were received except the second and final call money on 300 shares pass the necessary journal entries now see the application money is 2 and issued shares is this much. All shares were subscribed for. This is a fully subscribed thing, right? Okay. Now here, first of all, you will write bank account debit to share application account 50,000 into 2, 1 lakh, right? Then share application account debit to share capital account again 1 lakh now the next entry is share allotment account debit to share capital now 50,000 into what is the allotment money 3 rupees right 50,000 into 3 is 1 lakh 50,000 then the next entry is bank account debit this is for the receipt of the allotment money to share allotment. This is again one lakh fifty thousand. Then you have 
share first call account debit to share capital share first call is again rupees 3 so this will also be 50,000 into 3 that is 1,50,000 and uh, here on the receipt of the money you have bank account debit to share first call account this is also 1,50,000 right now we come to the share second and final call now here you will have share second and final call account debit to share capital account this is uh, 50,000 into 2 rupees 1 lakh right this 2 rupees here on the second and final call now bank account debit to share second and final call account now we are saying here there were 50,000 shares out of that 300 shares have not paid so what is 300 into 2 300 into 2 is 600 600 rupees have not been received has not been received right so this is the calls in arrears amount so now 1 lakh minus 600 out of 1 lakh 600 has not been received so that is 99,400 rupees this is what you have received and the rest goes into calls in arrears account so the entry for that is calls in arrears account debit right to share second and final call account this is how much this is 600 rupees now in this question they have not given anything like it has been received on a future date or something like that supposing they had given this uh, the shared the defaulting uh, members paid the shared second and final call after two months something like this something like this has been given then whatever date is given there you will put that date and then you will write bank account debit two calls in arrears this will be 600 rupees now there is no mention of interest so nothing will come regarding interest if the question if in the question they are given something relating to interest like how many percent has to be charged or something like that then you will calculate the interest and put it right now in the balance sheet when you make the balance sheet right uh, see the first thing that you put here is equities and liabilities right under that you will have shareholders funds shareholders funds and below that you will have share capital right this will be the total and then you will have the assets under the assets you will have current assets here and under current assets you will have cash and cash equivalents now that 600 rupees the balance sheet suppose the balance sheet is prepared uh, before the cash is received this this particular entry supposing I say that this entry is not there fine okay now there is calls in areas so now when you make the balance sheet you, uh, we should have actually received 50,000 into 10 that is 5 lakh rupees right but out of that 600 is not received so actually we have received 4 lakh 99,400 right so in the shareholders funds you will show only 4 lakh 99,400 and current assets cash and cash equivalents will also be 4 lakh 99,400 when you show the 
notes to the accounts balance sheet right here in the share capital you will have uh, columns like authorized capital in, the, in this question supposing authorized capital is also 50,000 50,000 equity shares 50,000 shares of rupees 10 each that you will show as 5 lakh right and this will be closed right And then you will have issued share capital. This is 50,000 of rupees 10 each again. This is also 5 lakh, right? After that, you will have subscribed share capital. Now, in the subscribed share capital, under this you will have subscribed and fully paid up and subscribed and not fully paid up right subscribed and fully paid up now in fully paid up shares you won't show that 300 shares so it will be 49,700 shares of rupees 10 each so this comes to how much for uh, 4 lakh 97,000 right and then you will have subscribed and not fully paid up not fully paid up now here you have this 300 shares 300 shares of which is 10 each Right, this is how much? This is 3000 rupees, right? Now you will show here less calls in areas. This, uh, yeah, less calls in areas is 300 into 2, that is 600. So this is actually how much? 2400. So when you add up this four lakh it will come as four lakh That is the amount you showed here in the balance sheet, right? So this is how the balance sheet has to be shown. Um, here you will put this. After this, you will write here four lakh. 99,400 and then um, this is the first uh, note and after that the cash and cash equivalents uh, that will be 99 sorry 4 lakh 99,400 right so this is how we deal with cases pertaining to calls in arrears right the journal entries you will have to remember here and the other things are the same for all the uh, journal entries except for those entries where there has been a default right so whether it is a fully subscribed case or it is a over subscription or under subscription whatever it is you just have to concentrate on where the default has happened if there is a default then calls in areas account will come into picture right so calls in areas account will be debited and the sh the call on which the default has happened that will be credited okay so with that i'll end this session on calls in areas